Have you ever been told to be honest, that the truth will set you free, that, you know, honesty is the best policy? Well, what if that's a crock of BS? Today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at why the truth is wrong. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? I didn't know that's the direction we were going, but that's cool. I like this. Well, so I was listening to something. I can't remember what, but it was talking about how pretty much all of the world's problems come from this idea of the truth. And it's like, I mean, we see this right now in the Middle East. Like Israel thinks that their truth is right. And Hamas oh, yeah. thinks that their truth is right. Think that their truth is right. And the Republicans think that their truth is right. Everybody so, thinks they have they have a yeah. unique perspective and they have they have the, the only truth. source of truth. Yeah, which is hilarious when you think about it because clearly that's not the case if everybody has a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I remember when I read uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X, he was like super intent on finding the one and only truth and then making everybody else submit to the one and only truth. And it's just like, what is this? What is this going on? You know, you know, what's funny, though, is I think that. I think on the one hand, I think we do talk about it because I, I think a lot of people that do that, we look at like historical figures that have done amazing things like big projects, you know, significant works, things like that, they were probably led, they probably had a truth they were following. I won't say the truth, but a truth at least, right? So something that was true for them. Yeah. Like, you know, like if you look back at the ancient philosophers, it was definitely like they were interested in knowledge and wisdom and furthering that. That was pretty much what was motivating them to do this work, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, so there is that side of it, but yeah, maybe better to say like principle because it's, I think, and this is the problem that we do. We, we've we made truth into like this thing where like it's all or nothing too, which I find so problematic. Like with all this groups and splits we make within society, it's like you either believe everything or you're not part of this group. And it's like, well, that's ridiculous. Like clearly, you know, I don't know. It just seems silly to me. <laughs> well, so it, it's interesting because we did an episode a while back and you said something that kind of blew my mind. How you just like, you're like everybody lies. Yeah, like, oh, yeah it doesn't totally. matter. Everybody lies. But like okay. I, I was kind of reflect. I've been reflecting on that ever since we did that episode because for me that's like, uh, I guess when I was younger, I was indoctrinated into this like honesty is the best policy. You need to tell yeah. the truth. And like anytime I didn't tell one hundred percent the truth, I felt super guilty about it. And like uh, you know, in scouts there was being trustworthy, honest, all this different stuff. And so like I thought people have to be honest and that was just such a mind-blowing thing that it's like everybody lies everybody does that but if you think about it i mean it makes sense right because like i think a lot of times i don't think and i when i say that i don't think any but i don't think most people lie with the intent to harm or to hurt other people i think that's rare so like people that are cheating people spammers like that kind of stuff i i think that's actually rare i think most people lie well, according, because... according to my text messages there's a lot of people <laughs> right? that do that. <laughs> it's true right <laughs> Oh, God, now it's the presidential election. It's like nonsense spam all the <laughs> right? time. Uh, but yeah, it's like, but I think most people, it's like, you know, like, you know, if you're going to miss something and, you know, maybe you just don't feel like going, but instead you say you're sick because like it's easier. The other person understands you don't want to hurt their feelings. You know, what's wrong with that? I think most I think everybody does that. And I think it's like, you know, it's a part of like navigating social interactions in like a way because like we don't know everybody that well like it's one thing like i've known you for so long like yeah if something i should just tell you the truth but like i know you really well but like somebody at work like i might not want to tell them the truth about something going on i might not want to tell them the truth about like a family member's it might be something as simple as like a family member's illness right or a struggle they're going through and so you just come up something else that's like to deal with that social interaction so it it makes me like wonder the the foundation upon telling the truth and being honest and stuff like that because it's like well if the truth isn't right and if lying isn't right so it's just kind of somewhere in the middle and just kind of best intent i think it's like i think it's more just like i think look i think we work society does function under this supposed like convention of truth telling right you know and i think this you can see this for simple stuff like if you ask somebody the time in the street you're not going to cross reference it right I always use that example in class. Like, I'm not going to go ask 10 other people just to see if it's actually 305 or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Because we assume that people are going to generally tell the truth, especially on stuff like that. Like, that's a factual thing. Like, what time of day? How far is this place? You know, 
So there is obviously a, I guess, a, a utilitarian benefit to telling the truth, but then you see that fall apart as soon as other interests, <laughs> like, and as soon as you get into those non, like, you know, non fact based things, like things that you can't measure, like when you talk about like mm-hmm. what is the right political position, you know, what religious beliefs are correct, you know, all this stuff, you immediately get yeah. into, you know, a bunch of stuff that has, there's no way to prove it. So it's, it becomes a matter of belief and a matter of perspective. And so there you get, I think, all kinds of stuff happening. Mm. It's easy for us, I think, yeah. to be honest when we're talking about stuff that's like everyday and like factual. Because, yeah, it's like there's no reason to lie, I guess. But like yeah. other stuff, you know. I read this book a while back called Radical Honesty about like telling the like the 100 percent truth, even if it's painful and all this stuff. And they were talking about how back when LSD became illegal these like little communes they decided that or they found out that by being radically honest like telling the ab- the absolute ultimate truth uh it had the same effect as LSD like yeah many people think they're in like bizarre land because think about mm-hmm. it because we're not our culture is not founded on that like it's founded on rough truth you know, like kind mm. of truth most of the time, but not all. Like, and social like, interaction. We're number one. Yeah. We're number one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and like social interactions, I think, are difficult. They are. And we interact with a lot of people every day that we don't really know. I mean, if you think about it, right? You go out anywhere. You know, it's not like you're surrounded by like, I think maybe if you were in a small community like that where you knew everybody, but even then, like, we're not, we're not, that truth telling like to that extreme has not been normalized. I think people would have a hard time with it. If people were honest about Definitely. everything. Yeah, because it would be like there'd be too much negative stuff, not intent- intended to be negative at all, but just people would interpret it that way because they don't know how else to interpret it. So it's easier just to, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was laughing because, you know, one time when I traveled abroad and I came back and, you know, you see like the, the different educational systems and the medical systems mm-hmm. around the world. And it's like come back to America and my friend who'd never left his state pretty much he's like yeah we're number one best education system in the world and i was like dude like look at any chart anywhere it's like we're like we're like 67 (laughs) i guess that's number one but we're we're number one number one one continuous contiguous united states (laughs) or contiguous north america not counting canada or mexico (laughs) (laughs) it is it really is funny though yeah, but that's just it. Though. Like those beliefs and stuff, that's all culture stuff that has nothing to do with truth. So it's mm-hmm. like, of course, it's going to be, you know, just belief. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. But, you know, think about so how many have... times, like how many times people yeah. ask you how you're doing and you say good. Like, are you really doing all good? Time. I mean, because all the time. Yeah, it's a it's a that's like just a social interaction. It has nothing to do with like, actually, they don't want to hear what you're actually going through. You know, like people, Mm-mm. it's a polite thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So. How does how does one navigate telling truth and lies? When is too much? When do you know you're lying too much? That is a hard one. <laughs> I think. Well, okay. Because I think you get to you get to a point, and then you just believe your lies. Like, that you is dangerous. You, you yeah. Grasp with reality. I think I I always like uh, what is it? Nietzsche actually said the number one virtue is honesty, but he meant honesty with yourself. Mm. And I always like that approach because like. When you start lying to yourself, that's when it's that's when you're too far, because like, you know, saying I feel good when somebody asks me how I'm doing, that's like one thing. But like then believing it or lying to myself about it or convincing myself of something, that's a totally different situation. And so I think that might be a good bar, maybe is like, when am I lying to myself about things? When am I making things out to be like, you know, false just to make myself feel better? It is a really crazy situation that we live in because we can't tell we can't read other people's minds no. we can't tell when other people are in pain like no nope. all of these we have we have a very very limited grasp of this world that we live in we well, you know it's crazy too. From, yeah. yeah no i was thinking about this too like dude you think about back like before modern times and before like mass like industrialization and stuff towns were small and you probably knew there wasn't all these like there wasn't all these distractions like TVs and phones and stuff. You probably knew what was going on with most people, you know, 
more or less because one like ninety five percent. Yeah, because one you could pretty much guess probably because it's like oh, it's the same you could thing look I did around yesterday. you and probably see <laughs> yeah. everybody that you knew. Yeah, exactly. Like, so I mean, like it must have been interesting back then because like you would have known if someone's lying. You know, like it, it just mm -hmm. you could at least have a good idea. But now it's like it's funny because like not only can we not know what's going on in people's heads, we're also living like as individuals around a lot of strangers. Like we don't know most. We don't even know what the hell half the people do. Like in our towns and in our communities and so when you think about it, it is kind of strange like it is very weird and, yeah, and even we if they like... tell us what they do we have no idea what their job description means no <laughs> yeah because 90 percent of them are like inflated like i'm a term. senior customer relations asset manager back in <laughs> yeah, uh, finance right. year <laughs> it's like oh sweet so <laughs> what is your work consist of i sit behind a computer yeah yeah that's a lot forms but yeah, it's mm. like it is funny though because I think that is part of it. Like community is, oh, I don't know. Community doesn't really exist that much, so it is very hard to know what's going on with people. I had this funny thought the other day. I was like, if there's aliens out there looking down at Earth, they must think that like the goal of human life is to hold a phone up against your head as much as possible. <laughs> like they're like, why do people keep holding these little black bricks against their head like, constantly? <laughs> like that person's winning <laughs> it is weird right but yeah. no we are i mean we're very uh it is funny that we don't have we don't have a very strong community and like i think you know i don't know it is hard because i think like i guess i see the fear of lying and that lying can become it can become a slippery slope and like i think hard like doing it to intentionally harm other people that's bad and i always thought of like you know when i'm lying to myself as being the biggest one too as being a good indicator those two because I'm not trying to, I'm not, whenever I lie, if I, if I say something like false to other people, I'm not trying to get something from them and hurt them. Usually it's just that you're, I either want to like, you know, I'm just being polite because I don't want to like burden them with stuff and I don't know them that well. Or it's because, again, I don't know them that well and I don't want them to know something about my life that's personal. So you just say something else and it's like, you know, whatever. And I think that's fine. Or, you know, yeah. I think a lot of times we don't want to make, make people feel bad. You know, like we want to do something, but maybe something yeah. else comes up and we can't do it. And so we just like, you know, instead of being like, I can't do this because you might want to do it again later. You just come up with like, you know, a fib. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. The old white yeah. lie. Yeah. So the truth is wrong. Lying is wrong. And but how well do, you know, here's something. the other thing. How well do most people even know themselves? Forget about other people. Because, yeah, we can't, we can't. Other people are like a black box in a lot of senses, right? Like we can't access what's inside but like how about most people even know themselves and i think this is the other side of it maybe if we knew ourselves better we'd have a different understanding of we'd be more forgiving too i think with other people if we knew ourselves better yeah like the master in the Tao Te Ching, you yeah. know just doesn't do anything with it i, I love reading that because it's just like yeah that person knows what they're doing with life but yeah <laughs> living <laughs> they're just living yeah yeah, yeah seriously all right well there you have it that's why the truth is wrong and uh lying is wrong and basically everything you do is wrong and <laughs> you're but, wrong you know we're we're <laughs> humans we we make mistakes we do wrong <laughs> stuff and then maybe actually the Tao Te Ching says uh if you follow the Tao if you if if you seek you will find and if you make a mistake you'll be forgiven so there you go yeah. that's it yeah Tao cool. is very but, forgiving no, super cool. It's super definitely, awesome. definitely didn't grow up with that <laughs> mindset. Anyways, uh, this is the Existential Stoic Podcast. It's been a pleasure having you here again. Uh, make sure to join us a few times every week. Can you believe it? And uh, we'll catch you next time. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Andy.